you should all be familiar with the basic idea of indices in that uh, every time, for example, here that we multiply by another 3, we're adding 1 to the power. So multiply by it another 3, we add 1 to the power again, and so on. Um, and likewise, whenever we're multiplying by 1 fewer 3s, in other words, we're kind of like dividing by 3, because so we take this number here, and we divide by 3, we get this number here. So every time we divide by 3, what we're doing is we're subtracting 1 from the power. So divide by 3, and subtract 1 from the power. So if I take this number here, and I divide by 3, well, 3 divided by 3 is 1. And if I reduce the power by 1, OK, I'm going to get 3 to the power of 0. So that's how we came up with that definition of anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1, because it's really it's anything to the power of 1 is itself. If we divide it by itself, we're going to get an answer of 1. So if we divide uh, 1 by 3, well, a simple way of writing that is just 1 divided by 3. So let's forget decimals for now. 1 divided by 3 on the left-hand side. And we subtract 1 from the power again. Um, we've got an answer of 3 to the power of minus 1. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. If I divide that by 3, a third divided by 3, well, a third divided by 3, that's the same as a third times a third. Just using a basic um, fraction division and multiplication here, 3 is 3 over 1, so that dividing by 3 over 1 is the same as multiplying by 1 over 3, so a third times a third. And a third times a third is a ninth, or 1 over 3 squared. So we've got 3 to the minus 2 is the same as 1 over 3 squared. And using the same principle, 3 to the power of minus 3 is the same as 1 over 3 to the power of 3, or it's a third times a third times a third. So the negative sign here tells us to flip the fraction, so 3 over 1 becomes 1 over 3, and the power tells us how many times the 3 is going to be multiplied by itself. All that should be fairly basic stuff that you already know from your GCSE. Just one more quick example there. 3, well, 3 is like 3 divided by 1, so it's 3 divided by 1 to the power of minus 5. The minus tells us to flip the 1 and the 3, and the 5 tells us that we've got to multiply it by itself 5 times. Well, 1 times itself 5 times, 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is just 1. So really, we don't bother writing 1 to the 5th over 3 to the 5th, we just literally write 1 over 3 to the 5th, or one third to the power of the fifth. They all mean the same thing. So two thirds squared means two thirds times two thirds. It's important to think about where the index is in relation to our brackets and the fraction here. Because the index is applied to the whole of the brackets, it's the whole of the two thirds which is multiplied by itself. So that's the same as two squared over three squared which is obviously four ninths. So in this example, the minus uh, and three, the minus tells us to flip the fraction, and the three tells us to uh, multiply it by itself three times. And the fact that the fraction's in brackets says it's the whole of the fraction that has to be multiplied by itself. So that's three over two times three over two times three over two. The mi no minus signs in the actual question in the answer here, obviously. Uh, the minus is purely telling us to flip the fraction. Obviously, we can multiply those numbers out, and that's the answer we get in this case. All right, let's look at an example where we've got a negative sign inside the brackets as well. So this negative um, is associated with the three quarters. The negative up here is telling us to flip the fraction, and this is telling us to multiply that whole fraction by itself three times. So that's minus 4 over 3 times minus 4 over 3 times minus 4 over 3. So we've dealt with the negative sign and we've dealt with the, the 3. So 4 times 4 times 4 gives us the 4 cubed on the top. And 3 times 3 times 3 gives us the 3 cubed on the bottom. So we've just got to think about what's going to happen with the signs. We've got a negative times a negative times a negative. Well, 3 negatives is going to make negative overall. So again, just simplifying out those numbers. Here we go, minus 2 and 10 over 27. Um, quite often in these questions, the top of every fraction is not really a major problem. But 
you know, some people like to uh, put their uh, answers as mixed numbers instead. So they're both equally correct answers. What about a question like this? 1.2 to the power of 4. Obviously, you could work that out in your calculator, but in a non-calculator paper, um, we'd need to be a little bit more lateral about that. So first of all, let's think about what would 1.2 be as a fraction. And obviously, the answer is 6 fifths. Okay, so this means 6 to the power of 4 over 5 to the power of 4. Well, 6 to the power of 4 is 36 times 36, which is 1296, and 5 to the power of 4 is 25 times 25, which gives us 625. So there's um, our fraction answer to that. So the key to these ones is um, don't try and do those on your calculator, on a non-calculator paper, because you don't have a calculator. Think about what fraction can you make from them in the first place, and then it's just going to simply be the numerator to the, that power and the denominator to that power as well. So um, let's have a look at this question then. So if we've got 3 squared times 3 cubed, obviously 3 squared is 3 times 3, 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3. So that means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, that's obviously 3 to the power of 5. So you'll remember again from GCSE that when we multiply um, two numbers that have got the same base uh, together, uh, we simply add the indices um, together, and you know for this reason here. Uh, so let's following that rule. Let's just apply that rule to this question here. Um, five to the power of a half times five to the power of a half. Well, a half plus a half is one. So this must equal five to the power of one. So what is it that when I times it by itself, five to the half times five to the half, I get the answer five, or five to the power of one. Well, simply the half there must be denoting it's the square root of 5. So 5 to the power of a half must be equal to the square root of 5, because the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5. And similarly, we've got 7 to the power of a third times 7 to the power of a third times 7 to the power of a third. If we add those powers together, that must equal 7 to the power of 1. Uh, 3 lots of a third are 1. So that must mean that 7 to the power of a third is the cube root of 7, because it's when I multiply by itself 3 times, as we have done here, it's going to give me the answer 7, 7 to the power of 1. So with um, fractional indices, okay, the denominator down here tells us what root to use. So 3 means cube root, Fourth mean, 4 means 4th root, 5 means 5th root, and so on. And basically for this definition here. So what does something like this mean? 3 to the power of a 5th times 3 to the power of a 5th. Well, it's the 5th root of 3 times itself. So that's equal to the 5th root of 3 squared. And that makes logical sense, because if you think about it, if we add these two together we get 3 to the power of 2 over 5. That 5 is telling us that we want the fifth root, and that 2 on the numerator is telling us to square uh, this answer. And by the magic of maths, it actually, by the way, doesn't matter whether we do 3 squared and take the fifth root of that answer, or whether we take the fifth root of 3 and square that answer. Those two things are completely equivalent. But sometimes when we're working things out, it's easier to do it the first way, and occasionally it will be easier to do it the second way. So just keep an eye out for what's going to be easier, which one of those two would be easier in that situation. So have a quick look at a question like this one. Four ninths to the power of a half. Well, this is simply the square root of four divided by the square root of nine. So these fractional powers are always telling us roots. So square root in this case, because it's a 2 on the bottom. Square root of 4 over the square root of 9, so we've got 2 thirds. Well, what about this one? Just ever so slightly harder. We've got, again, we're going to be dealing with square roots, and the minus tells us we're going to have to flip the fraction. So flipping the fraction first, 9 sixteenths becomes 16 over 9, so it's the square root of 16 over 9. And the square root of 16 is 4, the square root of 9 is 3. Interestingly, this is the same as the square root of 16 over 9. So there's lots of different ways of presenting these things, and you've got to learn all about these so that you remember them to make your A-level maths nice and easy. 
Right, finally, let's have a look at this question here. So we'll always when we've got these uh, slightly difficult numbers inside the brackets here, the first thing to do is to turn them into a top-heavy fraction. And obviously 2 and 1 quarter is the same as 9 quarters, so that's 9 over 4. Um, then we'll deal with the negative indices. So instead of 9 over 4, it becomes 4 over 9. Um, and we've lost our negative index power there. So we're now looking to cube it and to square root it. So we could cube 4 and then take the square root of that. We could cube 9 and take the square root of that. But in this case, visually, it's obviously easier to take the square root of 4 and then cube it. So we end up with 2 over 3 all cubed. So we've done the square rooting. And that is 8 over 27. 2 cubed is 8 and 3 cubed is 27. So hopefully that covers off about everything you need to know about indices, positive indices, fractional indices and negative indices.